What's up you guys, DDOT here, and welcome to my first video. I've been meaning to, to make some videos for quite some time now, but I've been uh, busy with, uh, with school and some other, you know, some other stuff, but now I have some free time, and as soon as I've had a little interest in doing it, and since I like playing Clash Royale, I might as well, I figured that, uh, I'll try it out and see see how well it does, but mainly I'm just doing it for fun. So with that being said, um, I wanted to overview go over um, the one of my decks that I've been using for a challenge for quite some time now, and it's a Pekka Battle Ram deck. It's a 4.0 cost, but it's more of a like a control deck instead of a beatdown deck, but you can play for the most you can play both for the most part. But um yeah. I actually went eleven wins with it. Ironically I lost to um to a motorcycle deck and most of my clanmates know I do run um my main deck is a motorcycle deck, so it's kinda of funny that I lost to the one of my own decks that I actually use. But I wanted to go over um, just a couple replays with uh, with that Pekka deck, and if you guys want to actually want an actual in-depth guide on the mortar deck that I use, uh, let me know, and uh, um, and I'll be able to start working on that. I actually climbed to fifty. 200 over 5200 cups last season with it so definitely it's a really good deck and it's a free to play friendly deck so just let me know so let's actually jump into one of the replays here against a golem deck here <clears throat> excuse me so typically you want to have um, baby dragon and battle ram in your hand it's a really good opening card, so that way you're able to um, just feel out what your opponent is doing. You kind of don't want to start with Peck in the back or E ways because if you run, if you put Peck in the back, say if they're running a beat down, then there goes your counter to their tank. And if you put E ways in the back, then it's easily going to get fireballed or rocketed or even lightninged. So typically you just want to run minions if you have like that a bad starting hand or e -whiz if you have to, but Battle Ram with um, Baby Dragon is typically what you want to run. So since he actually dropped down Golem, then we actually have a really good counter with the, which is the P.E.K.K.A. So now we're trying to still figure out what he's trying to do. Or at least what golem variant he's running, and he's running the e barbs variant. So maybe he's running um, fireball or lightning instead. So we don't know that yet because he hasn't shown that in the match. But he did get good damage in. But now we're actually going in for a counter push. I haven't seen Skarmy yet, so I'm actually hovering Zap just in case. But he dropped archers instead. So since he actually over defended that on that. We're actually able to take this tower. So he drops E barbs. Peck is still alive, so it actually gets way more value than what I actually spent on it. I was gonna drop Pekka first, but since we know he's running a golem deck, it's actually not the best move to do. And as you can see. We're going in the other lane, so now, in this scenario, we're actually, at this point in time, I'm thinking about going for the three crown instead, because since we're already down, or he's already down at tower, and we're up at tower, and he's going all in on one side, so we're both going for a right lane rush. So I'm just going to put minions, just to help alleviate the damage, and continue to put the pressure on on, on the other lane.
So we got those archers in the back. And then I was hoping that uh, the E-Wizard was going to get an extra shot in. That's okay, my lightning, otherwise I wouldn't have, because that put, actually put me down on Elixir. So now I actually have to defend more carefully, since my tower is already damaged on that side. And he already realized that he's one cycle away from losing the match, so all we have to do is just defend. And cycle back to our lightning to actually get the win. So as soon as we save up to 6 Elixir, drop lightning down. And that's it for that game. So three crown victory for that one. Alright, so let's jump into another one. It's an actual, um, more viable deck that you would typically see. Um, this one here, as everyone knows with the bait archetype that's really dominant right now. So, I see Princess, and I'm already thinking, okay, more than likely it's a bait deck. And since he dropped Princess and Goblin Barrel, it's kind of reaffirming that thought that I have. So, with knowing this, I know that pretty much the only defense he has that counters this deck is Inferno Tower. So, knowing that, us ourselves, we want to think about trying to bait out his Inferno Tower with the ramp. And then we actually can go in for a bigger push with the P.E.K.K.A. And by that time, especially when it hits Double Elixir, we actually would cycle back to another ram and actually have a better chance of connecting that to the tower. So first two minutes, you're still just, you're trying to pay, play passively, not take too much damage, and get some damage um, whenever you can. For the... Baby Dragon placement, always place it in the furthest tile. In the corner tile, I should say. For that exact reason, when they drop that Inferno Tower, it will pull every ground unit, but not every air unit. With um, that placement, you want to do a 3-3 plant instead of that 4-3 uh, plant that they did. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you'll actually lose hundreds of damage if you guys mess up on that um, tower placement or building placement. So, he's actually going for a trick barrel. You can kind of notice when that happens, the barrel actually flies a lot higher than it normally does. I wasn't too worried about that princess he played in the other lane to try and pressure me. Because bait decks, if he's not running the hog rider, and he's running the, the standard knight with rocket. Typically these decks, they only win by uh, a single tower victory. So, unless you have hogs, so you're able to actually punish a lot harder. We don't have to worry too much about dual lane pressure. So as the P.E.K.K.A is tanking for all the shots, we actually were able to connect the battle ram to the tower. Knowing this, we have 30 seconds left. So all we have to do right now is just hold and continue with the pressure. So he actually opts to drop with that sneaky bro, but he actually messed up on the timing so we actually were able to see it. With that kind of thing, you just want to listen to the audio cues. That's the only way you can actually tell, because if you're playing with the sound off, you won't be able to tell. Sometimes I do, so that's actually sometimes a bad idea, but all we have to do is just defend and that's a one crown victory right there so let's actually jump into an actual match and see how well I do I'm not too sure how I'm gonna do with uh, actually commentating and playing in real time so let's see how well it does or how well I do so starting hand I'm gonna drop baby dragon in that farthest tile Goblin Barrel, so we're thinking, okay, maybe he's running bait with Hog or just a standard bait deck. So let's see what he does to respond to the Baby Dragon. Okay. Let's actually go in here because he actually drops seven. 
Oh, that's unfortunate. Those uh, under-level goblins. That's unfortunate for our, our opponent, but it is what it is. Okay. So we almost know every, every card that he has in his hand. So let's see what he does. Is he going to drop Hog? Okay. Definitely a trick barrel. So let's actually wait until the tower starts aiming at the minions and the baby dragon. Then we can actually go in. Let's actually zap here. So now it retargets onto the barbarians, and now that baby dragon is going to get a lot of chip damage in. Definitely be aware of when to play zap and when to retarget, because sometimes you don't want to retarget onto something that's closer to the tower. Just, it's little mind games like that. So, he's going to get some damage in, but not so much. Let's see what he does. He drops Bowler. Okay, so we'll drop Pekka right here between the towers. Just in case he drops Hog behind it, or in front of it. There we go. Log through all this. Pekka will be able to clean up on... on the bowler and and the sky. So now let's actually go on the offensive here. Especially since he's spent a lot more on that offensive push expecting to to take this tower. So I'm expecting another hog rider, so let's see what he does. We'll drop baby dragon to take care of this splash. The fact that he changed lanes right there actually cost him the match. He should have tried to apply more pressure onto the other to the lane that had the lower damage. But since I played Pekka there, I actually denied him that uh, ability to do so. So, good game. 1-0 victory. Like I said, it's a really good deck. It's a challenge deck. Especially since it runs a lot of epics in it in one legendary. So if you're able to run it in tournament standard, then run it. And um, yeah, let me know. Let me know how well you guys do with it. If it's a fun deck, if it's a deck that you guys actually enjoy playing or whatnot. And um, let me know. Let me know what you guys think about the video. And um, maybe some suggestions or some decks that you guys want me to check out or play and some advice or whatnot so but thank you guys for watching and um check out my other links for um instagram or the facebook page and stuff i just created for you guys if you guys want to check it out or whatnot but um thank you and uh see you guys next time